Warning, some contents may be disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Please help me identify what I ran into. About a year ago, I had moved to a new area in northern Utah, USA. I quite enjoy hiking alone and went on a new trail with my dog one morning at around 8 a.m. About two miles into the main trail, I came across a path that seemed to have been in touch for some time. But I wanted to explore, so I jumped off the main path. One to two miles into this smaller trail I hiked into, what looked like a camping area, but I had not seen it on any of the maps, nor in the area reviews. So, I thought this was a bit strange. I hiked past this, and suddenly, I got a horrible feeling of dread, and I froze. The forest had gone silent, and my dog was frozen staring at a nearby bush. Then, the said bush rustled. Whatever moved inside the bush seemed large, human-sized or bigger. And I stood there staring, when suddenly, whatever was there started making loud clicking sounds with its tongue. It was strange because, number one, these sounds were much too loud to be human, and number two, they were being made in patterns and increments, and after some time, the thing quickly moved up the mountain, though still obscured by trees, and I got a decent idea of how fast it could move. It was again much too quick to be human, and it continued clicking, then I saw it dash up and over a ridge. It was tall at least 6 feet, or 1.8 meters, and it had stark black and white coloring. I know my animals, and it was like nothing that I have ran into or researched before. I had a co-worker swear to me that it was a skinwalker, though I am curious if there is a different cryptic or folklore being that matches this description better. I would just like to have a good idea of what I could be dealing with. Last night, when I was using the bathroom, I heard a noise. Who has seen the film Annihilation? You know the bear thingy in it that mimics people talking. It sounded like that, but kind of like it was choking or gurgling. Then some dog started barking, and I heard like a raspy imitation of the dog's barking. Then it stopped. Then dead silence, apart from the noise of my shower. About an hour later, when having a treat after dinner, through a split in my curtains, I saw something dashing around, but figured that it was just tree branches. I went to bed, woke up, did normal stuff that I would do on a bank holiday from my school. Literally about 15 minutes ago, my dog started freaking out and twisting her head and jumping and clawing at the back door as if something was outside. Usually for a cat or squirrels, she would do this. But I was spooked considering that it's dark and 4.30 at late autumn in the UK. I caught a glimpse of a tall shadow darting across my garden. It looked like that of an ape or monkey swinging. So I shined my 4,000 LM torch outside, but I couldn't see anything. Does anyone know what this is? I try to tell my mom, but she didn't think otherwise of it. I keep hearing things from outside like rustling, but I live in a populated town on a populated road. And I would appreciate any thoughts about this. In the summer of 2017, around 10 p.m., I was in the kitchen watching YouTube videos on my phone when I decide it's time to go to sleep. So, I go turn off the light to the kitchen, and as I'm walking past one of the kitchen window that leads to the backyard, 
I noticed someone. At first, I had this gut feeling that told me to look to my peripheral vision, and I look out the kitchen window, and I see a black figure walking across my backyard. At this point, I am frozen with fear, and I see this thing walking across my yard with its bright glowing eyes, and I assume that it noticed me, because its head tilted in my direction and it suddenly vanished. The figure was completely black and its body looked like it was made out of fog, almost like a black thundercloud, and its only facial textures were these glowing white eyes. Also, the outline of its body had a thin spectrum of colors, similar to the colors of a soap bubble when you look into it, or the rainbow color of oil when it's dropped on the floor. I have no idea what to even call this thing, but it was a scary experience. Does anyone have any clue what this thing was? Creek Trail Encounter New Zealand. Back in 2013, me and my cousin had an encounter with the Moehau man, Bigfoot. So me and my cousin were both 18 at the time. We just finished our last year in high school and we were on our end of year holidays, and we both had no idea what we were going to do on our break. My cousin suggested that we go spend a week up in the coast with one of our grandfathers. Now, before I move on, we live in a small town called Gisborne, 40,000 population and the coast is pretty much the rural area near my town. All bush and forest pretty much, and our family has a homestead in a small settlement called Waipiro Bay. Our grandfather was happy we were there to spend some time with him. I was happy to be there too. Just something about being in the bush just relaxes and clears my mind. Anyway, after a long day of hearing sheep and cutting up wood, our grandfather told us that we should go spotlighting for eels for our dinner. We waited until about 20 o'clock and off we went. Now, my grandfather's house is on this hill, and right below it, at the back of his house, is this trail that leads to a creek trail. The creek trail is about an hour walk, and the sides is fully covered with thick brush. Unfortunately, the eels were too small to catch. We get to the end of the trail and turn back the way we came. As we were walking back, we started to hear these weird squeals coming from the left side of the bushes. So we stopped, turned our head towards us off, and just listened. In my mind, I thought it was just a wild boar running around, and my cousin said the same thing as well. We turned our torches back and carried on through the creek. About five minutes later, we can hear the squeals again, but this time, they were louder and closer, and something was rubbishing through the bushes. We stopped, turned our torches off, and listened. We both faced where the noise was coming from, and we could see this black silhouette staring at us. My cousin reached to turn his headlamp on, and there he was, staring right at us the Moehau man, his face covered in thick black grayish hair, orange yellow bright eyes, teeth like a canine, hands as big as my head. He looked at us and let out this big huff and stepped back into the bushes and off he went. Me and my cousin both just looked at each other, let this sigh of relief out and carried on back to the house. We never said our word on our way back, just silent. We get back to the house and my grandfather says, no luck on the eels? And my cousin replies, I think we just saw the Moehau man. My grandfather looks at us and says, yeah, I've seen him around here a few times as well. I just leave him be. I was shocked when he said that. I was like, wait, you've seen him too? My grandfather says, yep, I've seen him when I'm out hunting. He's come to the house a few times too, but he doesn't come close though, so I just let him be. And he also told us he didn't want us to go out and look for him either, like we were gonna do that. But my grandfather believes that the Moehau man is some ancient guardian that watches over the local forest near him. I'm 28 now, and I still think night at times. The only other person I've told this story to is my partner. She believed me. She's also had some pretty weird encounters slash experiences before we met. Hey everyone. This has been on my mind since it happened. I'm new to Reddit so forgive me for any mistakes in posting this. I am male and 20, and me and my buddies enjoy late night walks on the trails within the various conservation areas in my region of southwestern Ontario. Last week, we decided to check out an area called Pleasant Valley. To my knowledge, this area has a deep-rooted history with the Underground Railroad 
indigenous people, as well as the War of 1812, if I'm not mistaken, given its proximity to Lake Erie. We enter the woods at about 2 a.m., and immediately upon entering, I was overcome with a bad feeling, and after walking for some time, the feeling progressively worsened until we reached two bent trees in an X over the path. My one buddy pointed out the fact that it's bad juju to go underneath, and we should just call it a night as we all felt watched. And as soon as we turned around and then start to head back, the entire forest seemed dramatically quieter. We all hear a loud, distinctively human whistle behind us, almost like how you would call a dog over. There is no way anyone could have been out there at that hour, and there are no homes in close enough proximity for someone to be out and about. We all ran, and I was honestly terrified. Me and my friends are all relatively big guys, and we are all comfortable in the woods, so it takes a lot to get us running. Does anyone have any ideas about this? Easter weekend of 2014, at around 4 a.m., my buddy Brian and I were walking to my house from his. The town had three main roads, front, middle, and back, and we were moving from front to middle. We round the corner and his looking at his phone, and I stop him because down the street, under a lamp, was something big and tall. It was squatting, arms resting on knees, it was fuzzy, and the fur or the hair was black. It looked to be six foot tall in its current position, despite being under a street lamp, I couldn't make out very many details. It had pale hands, they were almost glowing, and I couldn't make out the face, though I sometimes remember it being pale like its hands. Its eyes were sparkling, not like when you shine a light on a cat or dog, but more when you catch a lamp reflection off a window. My friend and I have cell phones. He even used a zoom to get a better look at it, but at no point did we try to get a picture. I just kept thinking to myself, Ah, oh, my phone sucks. It's gonna be blurry. What if the flash pisses it off? and we decided to just switch roads and continue to the back road, and I could feel it watching us until we were out of sight. We have never seen it again, and Brian didn't see any footprints when he went back a couple hours later. And the next day it was raining, but there was a weird smell in the air. I wanted to explain it as a bear, but it was squatting like a human and didn't make any noise. It could have been a drunk, but there are not many people that tall in our town, with puffy or fur jackets to boot, and my dad jokingly suggested aliens. Before we start the story, here's a little bit of a definition. Klu is a shape-shifting cryptid or entity common to communities that were settled by the French in both the U.S. and Canada. These myths and legends were especially popular during the height of the French Mackinac fur trade. The exact origins of the term are unknown, translating roughly to the term werewolf. This creature may in fact be one of the many that influence modern werewolf folklore and stories, and these myths in themselves are often seen as a mixture between the European idea of werewolves and various Native American shapeshifter lore, like the Wendigo of the Anishinaabe legends, for example, may play a significant role in the formation and continuation of the stories. Now, for my story. It all started one night a few years ago when I was hanging out with a guy friend of mine, let's call him D and his cousin. D and I had really come to bond over some of our strange beliefs and experiences, and the story that I'm about to tell 
wasn't the first foray for either of us into things of the otherworldly nature, but for me, it was one of the most significant and had a lasting impact on how I view these things. I was living in Chicago at that time and was working at a bar at somewhat near downtown. If you believe in superstitions and fairy tales, it would be easy to assume that strange things only happen to people deep in the woods or in remote locations, and that a city such as Chicago would be mainly devoid of supernatural or otherworldly experiences. It's easy to assume that densely populated areas wouldn't exactly be a breeding ground for this kind of strange activity, but you would be wrong. On this particular night, it was slow at work and Dee and his cousin just happened to be in the area, so he texted me to ask what my plans were, so I suggested that they come to my place for a quick drink just before we closed since it was already nearing 2 a.m. I finished my side work just as they were arriving, 10 minutes till 2, so we all had a quick drink and took off to find another bar that was still open. But I think it must have been a Sunday or something, because everything in the area was closed. So, we decided to head back to our neighborhood on the far north side of the city, and as we were deciding what to do, Dee casually mentioned that he knew a liquor store in the northern suburbs that was open till 3 a.m. every night. So, we devised an impromptu plan to grab some beers and have a late night stroll on the nearby beach. I would like to mention that this particular beach was about a 10 minute walk from where I was living at that time and it had a bike trail with a park that I would often rollerblade or walk through. When we got to the park, everything seemed normal. Both the parking lot and the park itself seemed empty, and we assumed the beach to be empty as well, as everything was perfectly quiet and still. By this time, it was about 3 a.m., so we didn't expect anyone else to be there. And as we were getting our beers out of the car, I noticed that it was a full moon that night. We often went on nighttime adventures in the suburbs when we were bored, although never to this particular beach, and even on college campuses, we barely ever ran into anyone. But as we walked through the park, I noticed how still and quiet everything was. And as soon as we stepped foot onto the sand where the beach started, Something shifted. The energy changed, and we started hearing laughter. But coming from where? It sounded like it was just out in front of us a ways, just right there, out in the water. But no one was there. It was a clear night, and with a full moon you could see for literally miles in every direction. There was no one there. But yet... The laughing persisted, and it sounded like two voices, a man and a woman, and you could clearly hear them in the water, splashing and playing and laughing and talking, but there was just simply nobody there. At this point, we were all actively scanning up and down the beach and literally asking each other, Yo, are you guys hearing this? It sounded like they were out there playing in the waves in the middle of the night, laughing and talking, but we couldn't make out what they were saying, and we simply couldn't see anyone out there besides ourselves. We all agreed that it was weird, and maybe we should have simply taken it as a sign to leave, but we ended up deciding to simply ignore it and headed to the opposite end of the beach. Maybe they're out there skinny dipping and they don't want us to see them. I offer this as a possible solution, but I think I was just trying to rationalize what didn't make rational sense. So, we ignored it. We walked to the complete opposite end of the beach, which may have been roughly the size of a football field. 
But when we got there, we noted that the voices had not changed volume. It still sounded like they were out in the waves right in front of us. So, we ignored it even harder. We opened up some beers, put it out of our minds, and frankly, didn't think too much of it for a while as we talked about random things, and I took pictures of the moon over the water. This went on for about 20 minutes, and we weren't thinking too much anymore about the voices or the laughter. Until it suddenly stopped. The sudden absence of sound made us immediately uneasy, mainly because, what the hell just happened? Why did the voices stop? Did they get sucked into an undertow? Are they out there in the waves drowning? We all looked at each other with the same question. What the hell do we do? Here I am, on the beach in the middle of the night, where we're not supposed to be, drinking beers and now there's people potentially drowning? What do you even do in this scenario? Call the cops? Run out and try to save them? All I can assume is that in this moment, we were all contemplating these same horrifying scenarios. When I saw a movement out of the corner of my eye down to the other end of the beach. A wave of relief washed over me, thinking at first that it might be these people coming up on the beach. So without even thinking, I started to point and say, Look, there they are. It's too... Realizing at this moment that they aren't people, I added, It's two... dogs? And sure enough, we all see what seems to clearly be the silhouettes of two dogs trotting towards us down the beach. Now, this was a decent-sized beach, but these things were not simply walking. They were moving with some speed and managed to clear half of it in about as much time as it took me to process what they even were. And as they started to get closer, I started to notice that they had very large ears, tails, and paws. Holy shit, you guys. I don't think those are dogs. I said. Those are freaking coyotes or something, and they're coming right at us. Now, I had seen coyotes in the area, and knew they were no strangers to even densely populated areas. But seeing what appears to be two wild animals trotting towards a group of humans in the middle of the night is wildly disconcerting. And at this point, they suddenly stopped in their tracks about halfway down the beach. They seemed to assess us for a moment, when all of a sudden, I saw with all clarity, the silhouettes of these two animals rise on their hind legs and became instead the shapes of two people. I immediately turned around to my friends and exclaimed, Tell me that you just freaking saw that shit. Yeah, said D, who looked terrified. They just freaking stood up. And that was all he had to say for me to know that we had all seen the same thing. When we turned back to look, they were already gone, like they had simply disappeared into thin air. Dee's cousin said, We need to get the hell out of here. And so we did, but it wasn't so much sheer panic as a sense of vague unease. We didn't run away screaming, we just simply quickly grabbed our things and started walking towards the exit. As we walked past the lifeguard tower, we noticed them, as if they had simply materialized again. There they were, the two of them, a silhouette of a man and a woman against the moonlit sky, sitting atop the lifeguard tower. We all slowed our step as we noticed them. Should we say something to them? I ask aloud. I couldn't help myself. The curiosity was overwhelming. No! Dee's cousin whispered sharply at me. Dee grabbed my hand and dragged me onward. Don't say anything to them. Just keep moving. 
So we left. We got in the car silently, and we took the short drive back to my apartment silently. We sat in the car quietly for a few minutes, smoking a cigarette. Okay, I said finally breaking the silence. But we all experience that shit, right? Did we just see, like, werewolves or something? And in that few minutes, we rehashed the entire experience together, from the disembodied voices to the shape-shifting creatures. And although we agreed that we had all seen and experienced the same thing, we also noted that if we had been alone and seen something like that, we might have just written it off. I thought it was my eyes playing tricks on me, Dee said, until I realized you guys saw it too. That was basically the feeling we all had through the whole experience, as if we had tried to write it off until it was nearly staring at us right in the face. But honestly, this wasn't my first experience with things of an otherworldly nature, and it seemed to me from experience that it's best to just let it go. So, I did let it go. I got out of the car and went into my apartment, and honestly, just went straight to bed. Like I knew it was a strange thing that we had all experienced, but I really just hope and choose to assume that that would be the end of it. And truthfully, I went to bed that night and slept like a baby. I never really felt like I was in danger or that something malicious had followed me. I thought that was the end of it. Until I started having dreams about them a few weeks later. As it turns out, they had followed me and they wanted to talk with me. One night, a few weeks after our sighting of the strange shape-shifting creatures, I had a dream. I didn't know that it was a dream while it was happening. It all felt so real. It was like I remembered nodding off in bed and then I came to somewhere else. When I came to, I found myself standing on an empty beach and I quickly realized it was the same beach where we had seen the creatures a few weeks prior. But I couldn't remember how I have gotten there. I just fell asleep in my bed and I woke up on the beach. The transition was so jarring that I started to panic, wondering if I had slept walk there, or worse, if I was losing my mind. My unease grew as I realized the winds were blowing and the skies were dark, as if there was a bad storm approaching. I thought about the things we saw on the beach that night, wondering if they had somehow led me here. And as soon as the thought crossed my mind, I saw something. Black inky, amorphous shapes rising out of the crashing waves of Lake Michigan. I worried that I had somehow disturbed some ancient lake spirits, and as I watched the shapes rise out of the waves, they took form of two large black dogs, each with glowing yellow eyes. They maintained the shape until they reached the beach, where they stood on their hind legs, and suddenly, they were no longer dogs but a man and a woman. Strange, ethereal-looking people, with long black hair and the same glowing yellow eyes. They stared at me, and I stared at them, and they stared at me. And I stared at them a little while more, until I finally managed to muster the words, w What are you? They exchanged a baffled glance with each other. No, but like, what are you? The looks of confusion on their face grew. In fact, it seemed like a mix of confusion and offense at the very question. In my dumbfounded state, I repeated the question a few more times. What are you? But they seem either unwilling or unable to respond to it. So I ask more questions, different questions. Okay, if you can tell me what you are... Can you tell me where you came from? Like, have you always been on this beach? Do you come from a different realm? 
that gave me more looks of confusion. You can't even tell me where you came from. Like, when were you born? Do you remember being born? Suddenly, the woman snapped at me. Do you remember being born? And suddenly, I was the one who didn't know how to answer the question. Do you remember being a baby, or an infant, or even a toddler for that matter? She seemed thoroughly annoyed by my line of questioning. Well, no, of course not. I stuttered. No, of course not. She said, you don't remember that far back. Well, neither do we. But surely you must know something about your origins or where you came from, I ask. I may not remember being born, but I have parents and family and doctors who were there to confirm when and where I was born. Well, we don't have any of that, she said matter-of-factly. In fact, things like us, well, we're the oldest things we know of. We don't have parents or grandparents to ask. We don't have anyone who came before us to ask where we came from. And frankly, we simply don't remember that far back. I was dumbfounded. I had no idea how to respond. So you want to know where we come from? She continued. Well, I can't tell you that for certain. All I can tell you is my opinions and my beliefs. So if you ask me where we come from, I would say that we come from God. And I would say that it's the same God that created you, that created us, that created all of reality. But the truth is, if God does exist, or some sort of creators to all of this, they quite simply are not around anymore to ask. But this is just my belief, and that is all I can give you. Feeling in a whirlwind from such a complex and unexpected response, I clamored for something to follow it up with. So, how old do you think you are exactly, or how far back do you remember? She sighed a deep sigh and started pointing around in various directions, saying things like, Do you see the water? Do you see the waves on the water? Well, yes, I said. Obviously I see the water. You see the beach, and the grasses growing on the sand dunes. Yes, I see the beach. Do you see the hills beyond the beach, and the trees growing on those hills? Yes, yes, I see the hills, and the trees. What does that have to do with anything? Well, she sighed. We're old, at least as old as the landscape itself, if not older. So as long as this has been here, we've been here. As long as the water and the beach and the hills have been here, we've been here. We're as old as the hills, you might say. At this point, I was exasperated. Okay, okay, that's all cool and good for you and whatever. But what does that have to do with me? Like, what does that have to do with me? They were both silent for a moment. Surely there's some reason you sought me out, right? Surely there's some reason you've approached me to tell all of this. And there was more silence. So, what does this have to do with me? Just then, the man who hadn't said anything to me the entire time just sort of shrugged and said, I don't know. We just thought it might be nice to have a human to talk to for a change, you know. And that must have made me so angry that I woke myself up because the last thing I remember is yelling. For a change from what? And then I was waking up in my bed and it was morning. I had more dreams of them after this. Most of them were vague and I couldn't really remember much. And when I told my friend Dee about this, I was surprised to hear him say that he had been having dreams about them too. He didn't claim to remember having any specific conversations with them, 
just vague dreams of shape-shifting entities. But as for me, I did have one other dream where a conversation was had. In this dream, I was at work. In real life, I work as a server. But for some reason in this dream, I was the bartender. It was the same bar, however, that I was working at in real life at that time. It was a slow night, there were a few tables but no one was at the bar. I was contemplating stepping out for a cigarette when a woman walked through the front door. Immediately she caught my eye, something about her was dreamlike, the way she moved was ethereal. She had long black wavy hair that seemed to flow unnaturally, and she may have been wearing a fur coat. When she sat down and made eye contact with me, I immediately noticed her eyes. They were a bright, vibrant, and a natural shade of yellow, almost as if they were glowing. And I just knew, as soon as I looked at her, that everything about her was entirely strange. But I didn't know that this was a dream, and I didn't want her or any of the other customers to think that I was crazy. So, I greeted her as I would any customer. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Yeah, she said, in a complete non sequitur. So I've been really into werewolves lately. She slammed both hands down on the bar emphatically as she said the word werewolves, staring at me with wide eyes and a strange grin. Um, okay, I responded, her comments catching me off guard. Yeah, have you ever heard of werewolves? At this point, I was sure she was crazy. Or cryptids? Have you heard of those? In my mind, I'm thinking, A lady, is this your first day on planet Earth? Who hasn't heard of werewolves? But I just laughed uncomfortably and played along. Yes, I've heard of them. Why? Okay, so you've heard of werewolves and cryptids and stuff. Cool. Yeah, I'm like really into that stuff. Like, I want to know all of the folklore about these things, and I want to know what people think about these things. That's cool. Can I get you a drink? Honestly, I was just trying to hurry up and serve her so that I could go out for a smoke. She ordered a beer, and I poured it and handed it to her, and she continued on with her strange line of questioning. So, have you ever seen anything like that? She asked as I handed over her beer. Like what? Like a werewolf? Yeah, silly. Like a werewolf. She made a playful smirk. Because I just want to know. I want to know what people think about these things. Well, I was about to step out front for a quick smoke if you don't mind, Maybe we can continue this conversation when I get back? At this point, I was honestly getting more than a little weirded out by her energy and her attempts at talking about some weird shit with me. Sure, sure, she said. So I went outside, but as soon as I lit my cigarette, I turned around and she was standing behind me. I'm sorry, I just couldn't wait. I wanted to talk about it now. I don't want to freak you out. I'm just conducting some research, you know, trying to find out what people think about these things. I try to steer the conversation politely back to her by flipping the question. Well, what do you think about these things? Do you believe in werewolves? I don't really know. I just want to know what you think. Like, I'm fascinated by the kinds of stories and myths people tell. The good, the bad, the ugly. I don't care. I just want to know. Do you have any stories, any experiences? This went on a few more times, with me trying to redirect the conversation 
and her directing it back at me, until finally I told her firmly but nicely, Look, I do believe in these things and, and I would love to have that conversation. I really would, but I'm at work right now and this isn't the time or place, you know. Like, I can't be standing out front, smoking cigarettes, and talking about this kind of stuff with people. I'm sorry, I just really can't talk about this stuff at work. That's all. That's okay, she sighed. I understand. I really should get going anyways. She smiled kind of a dejected smile, and I suddenly felt a little bad for being so dismissive. Okay, I said. I'm sorry I can't talk more about that stuff right now, but I have to get back to work. Okay, she said. Have a good one. And she started to walk off down the street. As I walked back through the door, I stopped and for some unknown reason joked. Oh, by the way, you're my favorite cryptid. She winked at me. And as I was walking back through the door into the building, everything made sense. I realized that this was a dream. I realized who she was and why she was asking these questions. And I turned back around and ran out the door as if I was going to confront her. But I woke up. I moved away from that apartment and from Chicago completely after that. I moved back home to Michigan, and I still have strange dreams sometimes, but I'm not sure if those particular entities followed me or not. If I'm being honest, at the end of the day, they were pretty interesting to talk to, and I think if I got the chance, I would talk to them again sometime. So that's the story of how I met the Lou Garou, and they were pretty nice, actually. I hope you enjoyed listening to this, and if anyone has any insights or has experienced anything similar, I would love to hear it. My theory is that these were not actually werewolves at all, but rather some type of fey entities, and I'd love to hear others' thoughts. And here are the top comments for my last video. And here's the riddle for this video. Hello everyone, it's your creepy sister here. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate each and every one of you. But I would also like to thank my amazing patrons, my top tippers, and my dearest channel members. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it with all of my heart. If you want to support the channel further, you could also choose to become a patron, a tipper, or a channel member. But remember, it's appreciated, but never a requirement. I would also like to announce that we have merch now. The link is in the description of the video, along with all my other social media links like my Discord server, Twitter, Instagram, and others. You can connect with me and send your stories there. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and comments are highly appreciated. And remember, your fear feeds me.